Here's a, another video on our L plan, L floor plan shaped house that I'm using. And I'm going to take and remodel the living room and the dining room and turn it into a cathedral ceiling. Now, the example that I'm providing you in this video is something that someone requested. And I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone, make a video about the L shaped house on the series and put a video together to give an idea of something that could be possible for the cathedral ceiling type of framing. He wanted to know, individual wanted to know if you could simply put a beam underneath the existing ridge. And I'm not sure that this is going to be the best way to do this project, but uh, I went ahead and put something together for him. And let's go ahead and remove the sheathing, give us a better idea. So we're just going to look at the existing structure. And again, you can go back and look at the house. Um, you can uh, look at it, uh, the floor plan, the framing, stuff like that. I'm going to have a, quite a few videos for this. Now, the ridge is going to be moving over a little bit. So we're actually going to need to install a beam across this path here and we're going to need to put a couple of footings in under this area here. Now, I don't have the size of the footings. Remember, I'm not an engineer. And of course, there will be neat, there will probably need to be some type of a footing underneath this, some type of a pad for uh, additional support where the post comes down that is going to support the ridge. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build it. I'm just going to provide you with an idea of what it could look like after you're done with it. And um, first thing we're going to take a look at is the wall here. Remember the other one had a top plate coming across here? You're going to need to somehow turn this into a rake wall, which means you're either going to need to frame a rake wall, which means you're going to have to remove the wall, or you're going to need to cut some type of a or add some type of post to eliminate the hinge point that could be created if we just um, went ahead and left this wall alone. So this is very important here. I know a lot of people go in and, hey, you know what, when it comes to doing a cathedral ceiling, your rafter sizes are usually going to be wrong. You might have two by eights and, you, and you're going to need two by twelves. So that's going to be the biggest problem. In this example here, I'm just pretending like I have the correct rafters sizes. I had two by tens and I'm figuring two by tens will work, but that's not going to work all the time. So when you're thinking about uh, putting a vaulted ceiling in, it's not just about putting a few uh, footings in and a few posts all the time. There's a lot more thought to it. And I am going to try to create more videos on that to explain um, how, uh, you know, a few, few more things that you're going to need to know. And of course, I'll create a playlist for that just devoted to converting cathedral ceilings on existing projects. So here's a post. I'm go. I'm using a four by four, connecting it to the top of the or bottom of the rafter here, and of course using a strap to connect it together. I mean, this uh, an engineer might require a full length strap all the way around. Come back uh, on the plates on the other side about four foot. So another thing to think about. Um, Blocking is probably going to be required. Um, and again, this is uh, you're just reframing this whole wall, making it into a rake wall using some type of balloon framing here. The ridge, the ridge is here. The supporting ridge beam for the cathedral ceiling would be here. And of course, you'd have a post going all the way down. This would probably have to be strapped. And then full length two by fours. I wouldn't uh, just go on top of the wall here. Really get a nice connection here with the um, full length post and the full length um, wall framing studs also. Going to make a big difference. Just giving you another view of the four by fours with the straps. And I just went ahead and cut the framing plates here the correct width so that I could slide the post in. Again, you can always put framing anchors in here. And um, these are kind of four foot on center. 
I didn't put one over here, didn't think it might uh, be a big deal, but who knows? Again, I'm not an engineer, and I've seen this done, but I've never seen this done here, this type of ridge design. Most of the time for a vaulted ceiling, they want the ridge under the, beam, under the roof rafters. Um, and then, of course, the ra roof rafter would have a seat cut on it, or they want the ridge beam to the top of the rafters, but I've never seen it where they have a supporting ridge. But I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but uh, an engineer would be the one who would be telling you whether or not it could be done. Strap, footings, you need some type of footings here. These I made 18 inches by 18 inches and make them about 18 inches deep here. On this side I have a four by six, on this side I have a four by four. Here's the beam going across. The weight is going to transfer from the post to the beam down to the footings. And of course, I have it a little longer. An engineer might only require you to bring it back about three and a half inches. Um, the post on top of the beam supporting the ridge beam. See how the strap here is connecting. Go into that in a few minutes. And you can use straps to connect this, um, whatever type of hardware if you need uh, feel comfortable with using or of course whatever the engineer suggests. The new gable studs are the new uh, rake wall studs and of course these can go on top of the top plates. It's not You're not really going to have a hinge point as long as you're connected to this ceiling here. So you might need to put a few blocks in here. I didn't draw that in. You might need to put a few blocks or something to tie it to the um, ceiling joist and you can see here where there are two by four wall studs and then we have a two by six top plate to give us our backing for the drywall and then a couple of blocks if you have another um, suggestion go for it um, blocks here that can be nailed into the rafters and then you could uh, nail it in or use screws I would imagine to attach the top plate or the backing drywall backing to the blocks. This, of course, would be to prevent the wall from moving side to side. And this can be done a variety of different ways also. Here I have them spaced, I think, about four foot on center. Another view of this connection here and, of course, the rip strip that I have up here. Um, went ahead um, and put a strap here and a one inch spacer. You know, this could be inch and an eighth plywood, I'm guessing. You're going to need to tie the ridge beam to the ridge or the supporting ridge beam to the ridge somehow. And I think a strap like this might be fine. Again, I'm assuming that you're not going to be ripping the roof off, but you might need to rip the roof off because when you remove the collar ties, you're now going to need to add a strap to connect the two rafters together. Um, every four foot on center. And of course I have these spaced four foot on center and of course they alternate. I have this on this side in this bay but you can see where this one's on the other side. So these I have one on each side and then here I have this one on this side but in this bay here it's on the other side. I figured to alternate it but you could put them on the same side. And here's the rip strip I was talking about. I don't know if this would be necessary. I just figured, okay, give it a little support for the rafters. It'd be about an inch wide, an inch wide, inch and a half, and then an inch would give us our three and a half inches. If you need a six by six um, beam here or something that's wider, then you're gonna be able to cut a wider rip strip. And this might actually provide you with more support. Just wanted to give you an idea of what the rip strip would look like without the rafters. Pan away. Let's go ahead and put the rafters back. And again, you're going to need a strap to connect the roof rafters. And once you remove the rafter or the collar ties, not the rafter ties. So if you have the collar ties here, and again, I'm going to put a picture over here give you an idea of what the strap would look like. And that is it for this video. Another one for our L-shaped floor plan design. And uh, of course, we're also at the same time helping out another viewer. So I hope it helps. And if it does, then uh, don't forget to hit the old thumbs up button.